Uh, hello, welcome to Street Chat number four, I think, technically, but we'll call this number three because we have three recordings. Um, today, we are going to talk about social media and street photography. Um, but So we'll talk about lots of different aspects for that. And then we've got at the end uh, some photographers we're going to recommend. And finally, the next street challenge, which should be an interesting one. Um, so social media i think uh i think it's fair to say that it's had a huge impact on uh photography would you agree uh would you agree yuri yes i mean um with the help of social media for example one of the pluses is that we we can connect to uh with a lot of photographers as well as get to know and uh, discover new new photographers a new work and it's with the amount of uh, amazing work coming out uh, these days it's um it's loaded you know <laughs> the yeah. internet is loaded and so it's important to uh, to also to to be selective and uh, kind of, uh, exclude all the um everything that kind of that you don't want in social media mm -hmm. uh, and find find this photographer find what you're looking for find a niche, like if you want street photography or social photography, whatever you, you may call it, or documentary, and then um, um, you, fi you find those, um, those photogs. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really true point. There's so, like the great thing about it is there's so much stuff out there. And the terrible thing about it is there's so much stuff out there. Um, like, uh, I mean, the cool. internet, sorry? It's hard to filter, yes, but you, you have to. I mean, otherwise you just, you lose so much time. Yeah. I I think like one of the amazing things is uh, like we were talking with uh, David. Um, I've forgotten his surname at the moment. Street street photographer UK. UK street dot photography, if you want to check him out. Yeah. And he was, Bar yeah, Barrett. Uh, Bar Barnett or Barrett? Uh, Barrett, I think. Uh, and he was saying before the internet you know he had to like go to art galleries just to get a chance of seeing amazing photos and now you can go to like magnum you could go to in public any of the uh burn my eye and you're gonna see great photos from brilliant photographers um you know and if you want to you can put up your own portfolio and have uh more people see it than uh, putting on an exhibition in in a art gallery somewhere, which is crazy. Yeah, 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 definitely. And like, it may be, <laughs> it may it may not be as satisfying for you kind of to to get the gallery up online, and, and, uh, do a proper exhibition with your printed work, but still, I mean, it, it's a great way to learn as well uh, because. Mm -hmm um you, you can find all those masses that you mentioned the uh, websites for magnum and, and public and uh, observe and there's lots of collectives a lot of a lot of photographers to um, to learn from online yeah i think it's it's it, that's a really good point about it not being as as satisfying perhaps because it's so easy you know i could if i wanted to i could just take my phone out and like take a picture of the floor of nothing and put it on Instagram. Uh, like, and that's just as easy to publish. You know, there's like zero friction in publishing that. I'm pressing three taps maybe or something. So it's, it's that easy to do. Um, whereas, you know, in the days of film or, or even when you want to like print for a gallery, you've got to spend money on getting things printed you know, you've got to take time to se really select what you want and uh, you've got to find someone who's willing to put your stuff up and something like that. So, like, maybe that extra effort makes it feel so much more rewarding. Like, you've got to have someone who says, yes, we want this up. Um, you know, you've got to spend the money and invest it and then, you know, people have to spend time to come along and watch it and look at it rather than, you know, a quick, I'm on my phone on my commute, double tap i like it <laughs> yeah 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 and 
Do you want to say the Brooks have, comment there? We have a comment, yeah. Uh, the frictionless ability to publish has given us too much to choose from. That's the paralysis, yes. Yeah. And also, like he said before that, there's too much stuff. I think uh, we should recommend good ones when we can. Yeah, we should definitely uh, recommend great uh, photos as well. That, that's what's good. I mean, on Twitter, I mean, it's... Uh, to retweet it's literally like one second and if you see something you retweet it you share it you, you, you reshare it on facebook or whatever and um yeah and another point is what to share and what not to share uh that's uh, that is the question <laughs> exactly <laughs> because uh like you said well you could just take a simple photo of the floor or, or of the sky and then just publish it on instagram and then you will be another um, Another photographer in the in the in the ocean, I guess. Mm. But yeah. if um, it, it has to be, I guess it has to be meaningful to you. It has to mean something to you, I guess. Um, in, in my opinion, and rather than maybe publishing single photos, uh, do a um, do a body of work or like series of images that, kind of, and then you connect them in the end. Or, I yeah, mean, I try to do it sometimes. Sometimes I just feel like right. That looks great. Oh. <laughs> just post that. I've, I've heard people say that's really important for Instagram. And like, it's true of the best accounts that I follow. They have a certain perspective and their photos fall into that perspective. Like um, there's a guy who I really like in, in Japan. I wouldn't necessarily call him a street photographer, although his stuff is uh, mostly street uh on the streets it's all very black and white with a fuji as well which is you know of course i <laughs> i like that um but uh his stuff is all in that style yeah it's all kind of outside black and white and it builds on each other like there might be one photo which isn't you know some of the photos aren't amazing but together they make a greater sum of their parts i think um maybe something like twitter Maybe it's not as important to have such a distinct style. Um, I don't know why. I just feel like um, Twitter, you can get away. Because I guess Instagram, you go to someone's account and you can you see like all their photos together. So it adds to each other. Whereas Twitter, you know, I, I might look at like the last few tweets someone shared. If I'm considering, yeah. should I follow them or not? But uh, I don't really like really scroll through and yeah. look like, oh, this guy's just sharing any old thing. It's not. It's not really for photos, is it? Twitter. It's it's mainly for communicating and uh, connecting uh, with other photos and, and um, you know promoting like promoting stuff like we do. You know, like yeah. uh, video chats and and, and um, chats about photography and. Um, uh, do you want to read the comments, Chris? Yeah, I'll read. Um, uh, so, Brooke, also, I, I think it's also the subjective nature of photography is also one to blame for too much choice. Any rubbish can be good enough as long as it's meaningful. Uh, yeah, I, I think I wrote something last week about, like, process and product and, like, how my natural inclination was, like, I want a really good product, end product. Um, and I, I heard some people saying like traditionally in art this was the important thing you know what does the final result look like but increasingly it's become uh, how was it made is important like since the 20th century uh, um, abstract art and stuff like this increasingly um, it was you know was it difficult to make what were your reasons to make it and things like this and I think um you know that's uh, that's important for what you share as well as like if it's meaningful for you, uh, if you want to tell a story behind it, then you know maybe maybe you can get away with uh, less good quality product final product. Yeah, I mean, and you don't you don't really care um, mm. about about the attention that you will get from it. I mean, you don't count the the likes and and the comments or whatever i mean 
if you get a critique, you take it on the chin. You, you get a good critique. Thank you. Yeah. And keep doing your thing. Yeah, I think one of the things which uh, I know Eric Kim has mentioned, and I've really, I've noticed, and I was, found it to be true, was uh, about how one compliment from someone you respect is worth, um, and, and you like, is worth a lot more than like a cheap like from a random stranger. And so I, like a couple of weeks back, I had someone, uh, uh, someone give me a nice comment about um, a couple of my photos. I was like, wow, that's really good. I feel amazing about that. And one of them I don't think got many likes on Instagram, but I didn't care because, you know, I knew one person really liked who I respected, liked that photo. Um, Yeah, so... Yeah, I would I would agree with you because uh, I had a similar situation. Like, I I'm fortunate enough to to know a, a couple of um, really good photographers around here, uh, with whom I shared some some of my work, and then I, I got some constructive uh, constructive critique, and then they told me kind of which photos they prefer, and then which photos um, I should just leave and then uh, critique on my own, really. Mm-hmm. Um, Brooke had a, a comment uh, a busy place such as Instagram doesn't let people critique you don't you think um, yeah I think it's uh, Instagram is more uh, business um, orientated well, especially now <laughs> yeah yeah, it, it has become yes and uh, that's why for critique um, uh, for critique what is the, where is the best place to critique I guess Facebook mm. groups or Flickr? Yeah, I think a face, f- Facebook. Mm. Facebook. Facebook. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good new platform that you just came out with. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build it. Yeah. Uh, face, Facebook groups are probably uh, a good one. Uh, Brooke, recommend viewfind.com. Quite quality storytelling. I know also Brooke uses um, Vosco community, and I, lo- I really like the Vosco filters. I think they do really nice film simulations. Yeah. Um, I use- and like i can't imagine them going like their business is selling photo equipment you know uh, editing stuff (laughs) Um, so thanks bro uh so i think um i think that's a good place for like to probably to get critiques i don't know if you can put a comment there actually because because i've been thinking like i don't like the new direction of instagram they have definitely i i seem to get more ads every day in my stream so i've been wondering what is the best place for someone who wants to i guess get critiques uh produce something of quality and stuff like that maybe maybe vosco is a is a really good one for that i'm sure you like the arguments for for using fate for sharing your photos on Facebook and on Instagram is because everyone's there, so you can get the most likes. But if you're not looking for likes and stuff, then maybe, maybe something like Flickr or or Vosco can v- VSCO community. VSCO, yeah, yeah. I haven't, um, I haven't really used the the app. I've used the, the filters. Yeah, um, you mentioned. Um, so. But for critique, I used um, for a couple of months. Maybe I was uh, I joined a group, a Facebook group, mm. um, with the, a critique orientated group, and shared a few photos, got some critiques, and um, uh, but there are there are there are some groups where uh, where there are strict rules. I mean, you have to also critique at least five times, and then I found that it's just it's quite a bit time consuming. Yeah. And I did it for a while, and, and then I just stopped. Mm, having having run some groups, I can understand why they have strict rules of things like that. It's to, you know, because you don't want someone who just comes along and leaves a comment and, like, uh, who comes along, posts something, and then never leaves a comment with someone else. Um, I guess we're trying to do something like that, I guess, with our challenges and critiques. And... Um, yeah, I, I think so far we've been quite lucky because we've had some interactions with everyone and it's small and small is always good for, 
that sort of community. I think it's much harder when you've got like thousands of people to have genuine interactions. Yes. Um, so I think a, a really good tip, if someone's watching this and they're wondering, you know, I'm starting out in street photography or I've been doing it for a bit of time, um, you know, what should I do? I think a really good tip is find a small group or start your own small group. You're welcome to join us with street uh, street chat, street talks, and um, really invest into that. Look at their work, suggest changes, and also appreciate the comments that people give you as well. Um, and, you know, do it like uh, the classic uh, iron sharpens iron, don't take it personally if someone's like oh this photo is bad you know okay i'll do a better one <laughs> uh, well exactly i mean you have to you have to take it as a as a not as a compliment i mean you, it's a critique but then you you learn from it yeah yeah and i think like that's it's a sign that yeah, remember like uh, that if someone gives you a tough if someone is tough on your photo they're tough on the photo not you and they, it also shows, like, I trust you that I can say these things with you. I think it's a sign of, um, of closeness, unless, unless they're just, like, horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's important to remember that you are not your photo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, emotionally disconnect uh, yeah. as much as possible. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, you press the shutter, but it's, it's a piece of work and it's a frame out of life and mm -hmm. i think it's easier maybe it's maybe that is easier with street photography because there are so many things which aren't in your control um you know like the lighting on the day well you can look for good light but i mean ultimately you can't just shove a softbox <laughs> up here or something uh you know you can look for a nice pose but you can't you know uh, well if you're doing like strict non uh, candid street photography you can't like uh, tell someone oh stand this way and uh things like that and so many of the beautiful moments you know decisive moments they pass within a split second so you know i think it does make it more okay to to have like rough edges to your images uh have, not being perfectly sharp, not being in focus where you really want it or something. Um, I think another thing I would say as well is remember, if you're going to be tough in your critiques, you've got to accept tough critiques. It's the same. Yeah, you have to accept the same. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I'm quite happy to be, if you want to critique me toughly, that's nice because I know that I can critique you toughly as well like if you want to really pick apart a photo do it and i'll pick apart your photo i also try and make sure i say things like uh, this is a personal opinion or something about a critique um because there are some things which i have like i have strong personal feelings about and i'm like i don't like this but this is i don't like this you know it's not that the photo is necessarily bad but i don't like this aspect of it so if i see like telefocus street uh, tele tele lens street photo of someone you know lots of bokeh around them i'm probably gonna be like i don't really like this <laughs> this is not this is not the type of thing i like some people like that That's, if yeah. you like it who cares <laughs> understandable but then if you if you're asked uh, an opinion then you share your opinion right yeah um i think one of the things i don't like about social media as a so uh, we probably need to move on a bit because of the timings uh one of the things i don't like about social media is i think it really encourages instant sharing and uh not being critical of your own work and uh, like there's a lot of encouragement to do like projects like 365 photos which are great projects i love them um but i think you know maybe you need to uh, it, you know, uh, if you've got if you show 20 photos and 10 of them are brilliant and 10 of them are okay then people are going to think like people will per, uh, perceive that to be like he's a good photographer but if you only showed those 10 really great ones people will be like he's an amazing photographer 
And so I think um, like one of the problems with social media is perhaps it makes people perceive you as um, lower. Do you think, uh, Brooke asked, do you think there should be standards for a street photo? Um, well, it's something we discussed uh, previously, and, and um, I don't think there are. I don't think there are any standards. I mean, street mm -hmm. photo for me, it's, it's just it's a photo. It's a photo ta taken anywhere outside. It can be uh, it can be candid. It can be posed portrait. Um, um, I guess it, it, yeah, but it's, it's easier. It's easier to say what is not. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, landscape is not street photo, um, <laughs> and the fashion photo yeah. is not street photo. I guess. Um, otherwise, I would I would just um, say yeah. I mean, I think um, with standards for street photo, you can also have like uh, what makes something a good photo, which we've also kind of talked about in a previous one. And um, there are lots of things you could say. I think in general, like. You know, if you want to break it down, I think there are two things which make a good street photo, like composition, well, maybe three, composition, uh, emotion or empathy with a, with a, a figure in it, and um, light as well, like is, is perhaps a third one. And if you've got great composition, maybe it's more okay if there's not anything going on. Okay? Uh, if you've got a nice um, emotive moment, then, you know, it's okay if the composition isn't perfect or something. And like with light, if you get great light, like that. Um, That's true. Well, should we discuss the... Um, uh, I wrote something down earlier. The mm -hmm. importance of having um, a portfolio somewhere. Um, I read yeah. it somewhere. I think on Street Hunters. The importance of having portfolio separate from the blog. Mm. Yeah. Not to not to uh, fill your your blog or your your Facebook with all all the work or your website with everything in there. Yeah. Um, is that connected to social media? I guess it is a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny because like classical, like classic advice for social media blogging and stuff is like, oh, you want to keep regular content because uh, Google likes regular content. Um, and so, you know, if you're publishing a blog post every whatever, then you're going to be higher up in a Google search so people can find you. Um, but I think, like, recently I did that change, actually. I, I switched. I separated out uh, my personal images, uh, which still haven't gone up on a new portfolio, um, from, like, what I was writing. And I think that was a really good decision because... Um, it allowed me to think more about what I wanted to write about and, and also make it a bit more general, a bit more um, for other people than have it, um, you know, then have uh, like, oh, this is to promote my images. And um, I think it, it will mean that I can make a better portfolio, uh, which serves the function of being a portfolio, better than having sort of it on the front of my blog and click here to see the images so i think uh i think it's and and i guess there's also an element of like uh it helps you know if you've got web hosting you save space <laughs> as well so i think it yeah. i think it's a good thing to do it depends what you use yet for the website and uh, how much uh... yeah um, how much space you have there but yeah for me i, I found it uh, it's it's quite a helpful it was quite a helpful uh, tip mm. and so what i want to do in the in the near future yes is to put all my projects on the, um put them on the website and just to just to post uh, maybe a teaser or a little uh, two or three photos from each project every now and then uh, because some of them are ongoing and some of them some of them are finished, but mostly I'm going. So it is good to to have them separate. Yeah, I think it helps with mindset as well, actually, because if you, you know, when you blog, it's good to like keep things coming out. Whereas a portfolio, if you want to be really critical and only have the best stuff, then 
you know, it's it's better to take your time in updating that. So perhaps having different places helps with that mindset. Yeah. Probably. Um, well, shall we move on to photographer recommendations? Um, Our street dogs. Yeah, why not? Um, so... Have you, have you found um, a link? Or... I haven't yet. I'll put a link on on the site. Uh, so uh, this chat will go up onto uh, Street Talk. So that's S T S T R E E T T O dot G S. Um, we'll put VR with links to um, to things we talk about, articles and uh, street photographers. Uh, so my choice, I'm going to go first. Is um, I really should have got his surname up as well, Spiros, uh, and his it's surname. A difficult name as well. <laughs> Papu. It's the guy behind Street Hunters, <laughs> and yeah. I'm just gonna find his surname. He, he's on Instagram as Spiros. Okay, so uh, so that's why that's what you should look for. That's the link I'm gonna put up. Uh, he's a photographer based in Crete, I believe. Yeah, I'm right. No. Cyprus, that's the island, um, and he does. I, was, I thought he was in um, in um, in Greece. I'm fairly sure Cyprus. I'm so okay. gonna be wrong now. Oh, come on, Chris, don't be wrong. <laughs> um, and he does uh, great. Um, I, I really like his style. Um, he gets nice up and up and close. Lots of context. Uh, does some off camera flash. And um, yeah, uh, Spiros Pap Papa Spiropoulos. That's right, <laughs> Papa Spiropoulos. Um, which was you got it right, and it's a, it's a brilliant it's a brilliant website as well. Which is yeah, worth Street making. Hunters is worth following for sure. It's it's worth following for daily news, daily photography photography tips and um they also have a channel on youtube where they yeah. post videos videos of uh photo walks with um, uh, different photos yeah it's uh yeah i really i really recommend it they've got some it's a real great site to check out um so I sent, I sent you my link on twitter on a message on twitter i got it actually i did get it so uh, do you want to explain your choice? And I'll try and. Share. It's a French photographer that I, I've um, discovered on Facebook, actually. Uh, I think through through a mutual friend, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, it's um, he he's um, he's a French photographer. Maybe I think I mentioned that a few times. Um, uh, he's been shooting for for actually for fifteen years already. Wow. He's got a good portfolio on his website. Um, to, it's not only street photography; it's also like a conceptual. He has conceptual um, projects uh, where he photographed um, in England four years in England, uh, he, and his most recent ones um, is a project uh, about Marseille, uh, a city mm. in the south of France, and how he sees Marseille. Um, his his subjective view of Marseille. That's really cool. Which is, uh, which is pretty interesting. It's it's uh, color photography, um, with the. It's very very dynamic, very uh, colorful, and he plays with lights and shadows. Uh, I really like that. Some complex images, and it's worth checking out. Cool. So Chris Gav Gavi. Yes. Yes. I believe so. Should be soft at the end probably um, <laughs> um okay and our street challenge this one should be interesting this week your challenge if you choose to accept it is on one day to it, i'm assuming you're a digital photographer if you're film then we'll have to adjust it a bit but on one day shoot 500 pictures and the reason for this challenge is to kind of um to get you out shooting, to keep you out shooting as well, and also to uh, to allow you a bit of freedom. Like it's an opportunity to try and do some things you wouldn't normally do. So maybe like uh, you know, do really long shutter speeds, 
uh, have a go with some flash um, or, uh, you know, uh, try like uh, last time I did this, I got into uh, zone focusing um, and now I only zone focus when I shoot. So it's a really good learning curve for me because uh, I don't know about you, but often I find when I'm out on the street, I'm like, oh, I have to shoot. You know, I want um, maybe this will go into a project I'm doing. So I need to keep with the style I've been shooting at. And, uh, you know, oh, I'd like to try that. But, you know, what if I miss that moment? Whereas when you've got so many photos that you've got to try and take in one, t one day, um, it's kind of like, how the hell am I going to take so many photos? So it just gives you the freedom mentally to try whatever you want. And, uh, you know, you don't have to take... Um, you don't have to take good photos for this. That is, it's really good to have a load of bad ones as well. Um, but then share your, let's say, I think three is pretty good. Share your three favorites uh, at three the end of the day. Three best shots out of 500, yeah. I yeah. Mean, you, can also choose, you can also choose a place and uh, really limit, your, limit yourself yeah. uh, if, you, if you're up for a real challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're a film shooter, we suggest maybe you take twice as many rolls as you would normally or something like this or, or take a week's worth of film and try and do it in one day. Or something... maybe for film shooters, for film shooters maybe we, we will try um, another time. So actually yeah. um, the ones who, shoots, uh, who shoot digital can shoot like film shooters, which means that they will only shoot, uh, <laughs> what is it, 24 times? Uh, yeah. Or 36 in some film. So, yeah. yeah, 36. Yeah. Or I, I, maybe if you're, if you're a film shooter, just use your smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to do 500 pictures with that. <laughs> I think that's another challenge for some point. So uh, where, where do we post the... Um, do you want to drop yes. the link? So or? go to the Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash slash street togs and that is all one word s-t-r-e-e-t-t-o-g-s -E -E and you can post your photos there anytime this week uh, before sunday and i'm sure uh, a few of us will leave comments uh, about your photos saying what we like what we don't like and something like that so um we hope you've enjoyed this street chat if you've got any other ideas uh, feel free to feel 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 free to leave a comment uh, on uh, on the Street Tog site um, or on Facebook or tweet us uh, at underscore Street Chat. Um, this Sunday, we will or sometime this week, we'll have another Street Chat on Twitter. Uh, we better try and work out a really good time for that this time. <laughs> and uh yeah I, I, we'll see what the topic is for that one yeah you but. can suggest you, you can suggest anyone can suggest a topic and then we'll, uh, we'll mm. discuss and don't be alarmed because the, the facebook page is, is quite new uh, so there's not Very there's new. not many likes i know that people have uh, freaked out some people are freaked out that's like oh like 15 mm. likes i'm not liking that <laughs> and so it's fairly new and yeah and we so. welcome <laughs> anyone but the good thing is you'll you'll be like one of the early people uh, a trendsetter it's a good so, word it's a good word <laughs> I, I, can, I can tell you're an english teacher <laughs> <laughs> you'll be like a hipster if you'll be there before it's cool i won't tell you my terrible hipster joke i will do uh how did the hipster burn his mouth he ate pizza before it was cool. <laughs> terrible, terrible jokes. Hey, more jokes Thanks. on our website. <laughs> <laughs> more terrible English jokes, dad jokes uh, on the website. Uh, I'm going to stop this now before um, before any more embarrassing Before things. you go into um, live at the Apollo's mode. <laughs> I'm stopping, I'm stopping.